The regular sugar that we put into our tea and coffee is almost 100% sucrose. It's a pure carbohydrate. After getting into our body, it's broken down into fructose and glucose. Glucose covers more than 80% of all the energy demand of our body. Sugar plays one of the major roles in the human body, basically ensuring all of its vital functions. For example, if sugar couldn't get to our cerebral cortex, it will die instantly. But our brain is not the only organ whose function is dependent on sugar. This substance is crucial for the rest of our body as well. Almost all metabolic processes in our cells are based on glucose. First of all, sugar is a source of energy. Second of all, it's important for the muscle building in athletes and people doing physical labor. And its third function is promoting brain activity. The human body can extract energy basically from every food product. But sugar stores probably the most of it. Two sugar cubes contain 12 grams of carbohydrates, the main source of energy. The same amount of carbohydrates can be obtained by eating two carrots, or half a banana, 200 grams of green peas, or several pieces of sausage. Sugar makes it possible for bioenergy to be generated in our body very fast. We get the glucose we need almost instantly after swallowing a piece of sugar. And our tight friendship with sugar starts from birth. Why do people love sugar? Because our mother's milk also contains sugar. When you eat sugar, you feel pleasure. Your unconscious reminds you of that flavor from your childhood. So sugar is delicious. Sugar is life. Actually, humans are by far not the only living beings consuming sweets. Sugar is a source of energy for all flora and fauna. Moreover, biosphere of our planet developed only because of sugar. And its main manufacturers and consumers are plants. Life on Earth, as we know it, wouldn't exist without plants. Plants are capable of photosynthesis. We've all heard a lot about it. In its essence, photosynthesis is a process of making sugars from carbon dioxide. So plants can bind the substance that we exhale, carbon dioxide, and use it to produce the very same sugars that we will eat later. Plants use sugar to grow and to form its leaves, stems, roots, and trunks. But a major part of the sweet energizer is stored as a reserve. When the time of blooming comes, a plant would use all the accumulated sugar to blossom as fast and bright as possible, and then to go traveling. Obviously, it's not very efficient for the plant to waste all these sugars that have been accumulated with so many difficulties. We can see it with the pineapple, for example. This is the fruit itself. It will be accumulating as much sugar as possible so that the animals that spread pineapple seeds would enjoy this fruit. That's really the whole idea, to distribute the seeds of this plant. The most hard-working collectors of plant sugars are bees. After gathering sweet sucrose, these insects use special enzymes to break it down or invert it into two components, glucose and fructose. It's achieved with the help of invertase enzymes secreted by worker bees into their honey sacs when they suck up nectar with their proboscis and then regurgitate it back into a honeycomb cell. And that's how honey is born. It's considered to be one of the healthiest products, not just because it's rich in microelements, but also because it contains sugar, essential for a human body. First of all, honey is important as a source of energy for our muscles, like the cardiac muscle, but for other muscles and our nervous system as well. Different honeys have different effects. So it's really important to consider what honey you are going to buy and the reason for it. You know, there's a rule of thumb here, and that is don't overdo it.
We also learn how to extract sugar from plants, although we need to put much more effort into the manufacturing process than bees do. A lot of plants accumulate sugar in their roots in the form of starch, but this storage root contains pure sucrose. Sugar beet is a product of selection. It has deep red color as opposed to regular white bee root. But that's not the only difference. Other fellow storage roots contain several times less sugar than sugar beet. It's literally three times less sugar than in sugar beet. Every seven tubers of sugar beet yield a kilogram of refined sweetness. In just 24 hours, this enormous amount of raw product will turn into tons of snow white sugar. To get there, beetroot has to cover a long journey. A single plant produces up to 1,350 tons of sugar a day. And all this sugar finds its consumer. It's an essential carbohydrate that provides our brain, liver, and muscles with energy. Sugar is crucial for our health and normal function of our cells. But does it mean that no amount of sugar is too much? For our body, everything has pros and cons. So if you eat sugar in normal, moderate amounts, it would have an obvious positive effect. But if you do it excessively, it might result in something bad. Can sugar turn from our friend into our enemy? Actually, the way we are built is fascinating because the human body has an ability to produce sugar to prevent a rapid drop in its level. It's an amazing, fail-safe mechanism against hypoglycemia, low sugar levels, and it's called liver glucose production. Liver is responsible for preventing rapid drops of blood sugar. The job of preventing the glucose level from getting too high is performed by pancreatic beta cells that produce a hormone called insulin. Insulin is needed to activate transport proteins that deliver energy to body cells. But in some cases, this mechanism malfunctions. Then a patient will be diagnosed with diabetes. It means that insulin is not produced in due time and has to be injected. A person with diabetes has to constantly control his blood sugar to prevent any sudden changes in it. That's why he has to calculate the amount of carbohydrates he's going to eat. So, roughly speaking, you open your fridge, look inside, and calculate how much food you are going to put in your plate. The amount of carbohydrates is usually written on the package. Based on this information, I calculate the number of bread units. One bread unit is 12 grams of carbohydrates. This thing contains one and a half bread units. In any case, you shouldn't really eat too many sweets. Because carbohydrates are energy for our body, and this energy has to be used somehow. So, when you're not using it, it can become dangerous. The fail-safe system is Absolutely ingenious. I don't know how we came to be these ingeniously built structures. Maybe it's the work of someone almighty. Sugar is an essential battery that replenishes energy storage in the human body.
It starts working almost instantly after being eaten. It's not a coincidence that sugar is a part of the state reserve prepared in case of emergencies, natural disasters, and famine. But it's important to know when enough is enough, as sugar can be both our friend and our enemy.